Hello, good morning, everyone, and welcome by our first edition of the Apple Insights Sessions by Labnam Pro. Uh, today, I'm here with Jordi, our, our Apple solution architect for Labnam Pro, and today we have some great announcements to do. After a week full of launches of new products uh, for the Mac, and today we want to give you a very nice overview, and also the updates we had uh, with macOS Sequoia and um, the iOS 18 updates uh, that we had last week. Um, during the webinar, you can make you can put questions in our Q&A box um, and then we can answer them live after the presentation uh, of Jordi. And of course, we can have a one-to-one -one as well um, if we're going to discuss some things uh, about a new product, a new software, etc. It's all possible during the Apple Insight sessions we do today. The session is also recorded and will be available um, this afternoon on our YouTube channel of Lab9 Pro. Um, so you can send it by, uh, send it through to colleagues uh, or can take a um, um, recap of the sessions uh, afterwards. All right, Chadi, are you ready for it? All right, perfect. Here you go. So good morning, everyone. Um, like Zeno said, I would like to take the time to um, go over the changes that Apple announced in the last couple of weeks. Um, we're going to do software first, hardware second. So let's take a look at macOS Sequoia, which was updated to 15.1. Uh, so Apple Intelligence is finally here. Uh, for the people that have a, a Mac with Apple Silicon and are running 15.1, they can uh, set their device language and serial language to US English and then can start testing with the new uh, Apple Intelligence features. So that are the writing tools, the improved Siri, the changes to the Photos app, um, the better notifications, smart reply and mail, etc. So if we take a closer look to a couple of those, starting with the system-wide writing tools, and system-wide is really important here. So everywhere where you can enter text or select text, you can um, have it rewritten in a different tone, so professional, concise, friendly. And you can proofread it for grammar or word choice uh, changes, and you can summarize that text. Um, I have been using this a lot, and especially on very long websites, it's quite handy to have. Next is the more natural uh, Siri. So Siri has a new look and feel. Um, you can write to Siri when you don't want to speak. And when you do speak and you stumble over your words, like I tend to do quite often, um, it will understand you. So it will just do the right query instead. Um, it's also conversational aware. So for example, if you would ask it if you can uh, reschedule a meeting from uh, 4 to 5 p.m. and you have somewhere to be at 6, it will take traffic in consideration and know where you're heading. So that's a nice change as well. Next up was the uh, More Intelligent Photos app. And the big feature here, of course, is the cleanup tool that is now available. Um, so you can just mark something in a photo and have it removed from it. Um, but there are also additional changes, for, such as the uh, memory movies you can now create by describing the story that you want to see and the music that you want to hear, uh, which is nice if you use that feature. But also you can search your photos by simply describing what you're looking for. And I tested it myself. Um, when I look for um, a picture of my son, for example, and I explain, like, I want to see my son on a yellow bike, it will also only show the picture with the yellow bike and not the red bike, for example. There are much more features to come. Um, Mac OS 15.2 is in beta right now. It's coming somewhere in December. Um, so all the currently available Apple Intelligence features are pretty much text-based. Um, the features that are coming in December are image-based. So the Image Playground, the Genmoji, and also the ChatGPT integration in Siri. Um, all these features are coming on top of, of course, the updates that macOS already had. Um, so, for example, the window tiling, which is very nice, the text effects changes, the passwords app, which is pretty awesome, um, and all the rest. I did blur out iPhone mirroring because that's not coming to the EU anytime soon, unfortunately. Um, talking about things coming to the EU, Apple did announce that Apple Intelligence is launching on iOS and iPadOS in April of 2025. Um, and also expanded language support is coming. So I saw French and German in the notes, uh, nothing about Dutch, unfortunately, but that's also coming in April of 2025. Last but not least, there were some um, changes for Apple admins. Um, so first and foremost, all these Apple intelligence features can be disabled by your MDM. So those payloads should already be available. You can just scope out the configuration profile and block the features if you would want to, but I would not necessarily do that immediately. 
Um, to add to that, there were a couple of changes to the Apple Business Manager last week as well. Uh, so now you can lock your domain uh, without having to capture it, which is a change of before. So now you can limit um, the accounts being created to only um, managed ones. You can uh, see the unmanaged uh, Apple accounts count in your environment, and you can then capture the domain without connecting to an IDP, which is a change from the past as well. Um, and users can now transfer their account to become a managed Apple account instead of renaming it and keeping it as a personal one. It's still a user uh, level choice, but now they have that option to transfer it to a managed account. And then also a small change, they now have 30 days to do that instead of 60. So if we then move on to the hardware announcements, earlier in October, Apple announced the new Mac Mini, which is my favorite, uh, uh, sorry, iPad Mini, um, which is my favorite iPad. Um, it still has that compact design. It now has an A17 Pro system on a chip, so that's the same as in the iPhone 15 Pro, uh, which means it is ready for Apple intelligence when it does come to Europe. And that means it has a better CPU, GPU, and a neural engine. Uh, it now has Wi-Fi 5E. It's compatible with the Apple Pencil USB-C and the Apple Pencil Pro. Important, it's no longer compatible with the Apple Pencil second generation. So that's a change. Um, and it starts with 128 gigabytes of storage and goes all the way up to 5 and 12. Then we come to the announcements of last week, starting with the new iMac, now with M4 processor. Um, it still is the best all-in-one desktop sold, I think, across the whole world. Um, it's now available with that nano texture display option, if you would want that. Um, it has an improved 12 megapixel center stage camera, so for any Zoom calls, um, that's a nice addition. It is up to 1.7 times faster as compared to an M1. I will share some graphs uh, after the slide. It has up to four Thunderbolt fold ports, um, new colors, which are a little bit more vibrant, I believe, than, than the previous colors. I really like them. The green is also very nice. And the accessories are color matched and now all USB-C. So yes, the Magic Mouse now has a uh, USB-C port, and yes, it's still at the bottom. Uh, the whole range starts with 16 gigabytes of unified memory. So if you take a look at that M4 chip, it now has a 10-core CPU, uh, existing of four performance cores and six efficiency cores, and a 10-core uh, GPU as well. Apple did share some um, graphs, and I took out every graph that compared um, these chips to um, Windows devices, because you have to compare apples to apples, right? For the iMac, they chose to give you a productivity overview, for example, in Excel, which means it's 1.7 times faster. Um, gaming performance as well, it's up to two times faster than the M1. The main takeaway here is that the M1 is still very capable, right? If you buy this desktop now, you can be sure that it will last you the next couple of years and you won't really necessarily um, have an, um, uh, a performance decrease, for to say. So who is this for? I really like the iMac at home but it's perfect for offices as well. It looks stunning on a desk. It has a great display, like that 4.5 Retina display is awesome. Um, Performance-wise, it's capable of quite a lot, and it's perfect for both work and play. Uh, if I put up the bento box, it still has the six-speaker sound system, which works pretty well. You can configure it with up to 32 gigabytes of unified memory. Um, it has very good microphones as well, so again, for those Zoom calls, it's more than sufficient, um, and it's up to six times as fast as the Intel-based iMac that was released a couple of years ago. Next up was my favorite announcement, the new Mac Mini, uh, also with M4. Uh, it's the first redesign in 10 years, and it's now very compact. It fits in your hand, right? It's a little bit larger than an Apple TV, um, but it's getting close. It's crazy to see how much performance they could pack in that small form factor. So you can configure it with up to uh, 64 gigabytes of unified memory, up to eight terabytes of storage. It has an optional 10 gigabit Ethernet port. Uh, you can connect up to three 6K displays at 60 Hertz, uh, and it has up to three Thunderbolt ports. Now, more most of those um, were for the Pro chip. So if we take a look at that Pro chip, and Apple did something weird here in their announcement, they shared the spec bump of the uh, Pro chip. So if you buy the default M4 Pro, it will be a 12-core CPU. Um, 
and a 16 core GPU, but it's available with the higher core counts as well. Uh, CPU performance is almost two times as fast as the M1 Pro uh, and GPU as well. This pretty much starts to rival the um, Mac Studio, uh, which is crazy to see. So who is this Mac Mini 4? And talking about the M4 base model now, I think it's the best entry you have in the Mac ecosystem. Um, it's a great value starting at 719 euros. And it, I mean, it fits all your current accessories, right? It's compatible with your existing keyboard, mouse, uh, displays. Um, you can pretty much just put it in. And I think it's the best value of the whole range of um, Macs available right now. If we then look at the M4 Pro, you can go bonkers on, on the specifics, right? You can configure it with an up to 12 core CPU, 20 core GPU, up to that uh, 64 gigabytes of memory. You know who you are if you need that performance, but it's crazy to see that you have it in such a small form factor. Uh, if I throw up the bento box, importantly, the new design, of course, and it's the first carbon neutral Mac as well, which is a very big environmental milestone. Um, I, I'm on the fence of ordering one. I think I will have uh, a Mac mini at home like this one. Um, if I then go over to the last announcement of last week, that were the new MacBook Pros, and they come with the whole range. So the M4, M4 Pro, and also M4 Max chips. They get the new uh, 12 megapixel camera as well. Uh, Thunderbolt 5 connectivity for the Pro and Max chips. And the whole range gets an improved Liquid Retina XDR display, uh, which now gets brighter up to 1000 nits instead of 600. And it uh, features up to 24 hours of battery life. And how crazy is that? Like we, we've been saying that a Mac has an all day battery for quite a while now, but there's a big difference between all day battery and 24 uh, hours of battery life. Um, so that's crazy to see. The Max chip as well, um, standard 14 core, but is available up to 16 core CPU. Um, and then standard 32 core, but up to 40 core GPU as well. Performance wise, this is a beast, right? Um, it's up more than twice as fast as the M1 Max, and graphics-wise, just under two times as fast. Uh, who is this Mac for? You know who you are if you need that whole maxed-out device, and I, I do know we have a couple of customers who might be able to use that, but I'm really eyeing the entry level here. Like, there's no much difference now between um, the M4 and M4 Pro. They both have the uh, better display. Uh, the M4 actually has better battery life. Uh, you have that increased I.O. So it's it's a hard debate if you're now getting a MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro with M4. Uh, if I then throw up the bento box, you have those two display sizes. It supports up to four external displays on that Max chip, uh, which is pretty crazy. Uh, you have that expanded I.O. It has phenomenal speakers still. Um, and that's uh, Thunderbolt 5 connectivity. Last but not least, um, the MacBook Air also had an upgrade, so to speak. Um, it still is an M3, but now both the MacBook Air's M2 and M3 start with 16 gigabytes of unified memory. So gone are the days that 8 gigabytes was the default. Now the whole range starts at 16 gigabytes. And I think I went through all the announcements, and we now have quite some time for Q&A. Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and that is the interesting part uh, of our session, of course, uh, that we have some feedback from our audience. And I know there are a lot of people in our audience, so it should be great if you, yeah, give your opinion uh, about those new topic, topics of new products um, that were launched. Um, like, for example, the, the Mac Mini. Uh, I think that, for me, that's the biggest announcement in a, quite some time, actually. And quite controversial with the power button now being at the bottom. I saw quite yeah. some things on, on online as well. <laughs> that shouldn't be an issue. I don't think anyone turns off their device much often, but uh, it's a great redesign. Yeah, absolutely. Because I saw already on, on it, I think it was on, on, on X, uh, there was a 3D printed button on the side that yep. you can put uh, on your office. But yeah, it's 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 carbon free, so you can can leave them on day and night. I think uh, I think power consumption uh, will be quite low. But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna be also one of them uh, who's gonna buy that that new Mac Mini. I hope my girlfriends won't kill me <laughs> if I uh, end up with a new Mac at home. It's cute, so it has the wife approval factor. Yeah, I think I think it's as well. I think as well. Um, then um, yeah, let's check. Uh, 
what's also very interesting is is, is the MacBook Air topic uh, that's now standard with 16 gigabytes. Um, I think that's that's also a really good bump, and it's also easier to choose your Mac now. Um, if you want to buy a Mac, that you don't have to choose eight gigabytes or sixteen. It's sixteen. That's that's quite a lot. I mean, I would have to check the numbers, but I think most of the MacBook Airs that we sell are the sixteen gigabyte models anyway. So now for the M two um, model, that starts at twelve hundred euros without any discounts applied. For example, for education, so that's a great value as well. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Apple, you did a good thing. Thank you very much. Um, then maybe we started uh, our webinar uh, with uh, the Apple Intelligence mm -hmm. update. Uh, I tested also already uh, to put my Mac in US English and then try some things. Um, it works, but you see it's it's growing, I think. Uh, for the future as well, it's, it's it's a growth topic. It's it's a phased release, right? So and like I've been testing the, the point .2 um, beta and those image playgrounds are so much fun to play around with. Um, it, it needs to evolve, and I think it'll be well in 2025 when it also comes to iOS in Europe um, mm -hmm. that we can play around more with it. But it works very well. I hope I hope that Dutch is coming soon. Uh, no word on that, but in English it's, it works very well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, perfect. Um, because yeah, maybe the 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 news we received from Pixelmator um, that the acquisition that Apple yeah. did. Yeah. Maybe that's also a thing Hashtag. about Apple Intelligence. <laughs> Hashtag bring back Aperture. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, that was that was an announcement last week as well. So Apple is doing the latest steps to acquire Pixelmator, which is very nice to see. Yeah, absolutely. So you see that that creative part is also very, very important for Apple. Uh, I think otherwise you don't acquire that, that company. So uh, yeah, we think we're going to see some things in the future actually about creative creativity that's going to be great uh, absolutely um maybe a nice thing as well uh, i read it down here um or the mat notes do you play with that yep um so the and i didn't go over that because the release of of um ios 18 was a while ago but mm -hmm. you now finally have the greatest calculator app ever made for ipad um, and you can write to it, and it will solve your maths problem. So if I had that when I was still in school, that would have been very beneficial. Um, and it works on, on macOS as well, so you can mm -hmm. just type out your equations, and it will solve them for you, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Um, so yeah, that, that's also a thing I, I, I took uh, from the webinar uh, itself. Um, I didn't receive any questions at this moment. Um, I think that everything is clear for everyone. Everyone is so happy with the new products. They're already ordering everything because everything is going to be available the, the 8th of November by Friday. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I don't know if we will have shipments coming in by Friday. Hopefully, yes. But uh, it, it was a very nice change. And I think, like, especially that, that MacBook Pro uh, with M4, which is now not really the baseline anymore since it has most feature well every feature um like it also now supports two external displays mm -hmm. uh, without having to keep the lid closed um, it's it's perfect and um, I, d I don't know if i said it during the the slide but um the macbook pro is now available with that nano texture display as well yeah i think for for mobile devices that's Awesome, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I like it on the iPad, and it should be great on the MacBooks as well. Yeah, it, it brings me back to the time where when I bought my first MacBook Pro 15-inch, I think, with a CD slot, and there was also the option to have that matte screen. Yeah. Uh, for my parents, it was too expensive, so I had a glossy screen. Uh, but now for my new MacBook, I'm going to take an, a matte screen. I take the nano texture display. Um, because, like you said, it, I like the idea to, to work out, outdoor, um, and like, for example, sun is shining, and you still see the screen, that should be great. And also pricing is okay, I saw on the side. I mean, if I if I look at the 15-inch um, MacBook Air, which is $15.99 yeah, without any discounts, um, I thought the 14-inch uh, MacBook Pro M4 is now $19.29. So um, you get more storage capacity and a better processor, of course, plus the additional I.O., uh, the better screen. It's not that much extra now so the value is is pretty great yeah indeed indeed absolutely absolutely also yeah like you said all the uh, ios you have extra 
that is the reason why I, I love the MacBook Pro uh, right now. Uh, it's not only I mean, the USB C ports. We've been used to dongle life for a couple of years now, but <laughs> like having that physical HDMI port is very handy at times. Yeah, uh, and an additional USB C port is always good as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, brilliant. Um, oh, and we have already a question. Um, I will read them for you. Um, you could tell the advantages and disadvantages uh, of the nano texture, please. Um, will those scratch uh, when clean wrong, like on the pseudo display? That's actually a, a, a thing, actually, because if you clean them wrong, then you have a problem. Um. So, well, of course, we don't have the devices yet to test that, and I wouldn't really, really recommend trying to scratch <laughs> that surface. Mm -hmm. um, but what we saw with the iPad was that it was better yep. than with the, the uh, studio display. Not saying that you cannot damage it, because like, if you clean your device with, with certain liquids, it will just take off that coating, um, which then is an issue. But if you clean it with a, with a cloth and some damp water, that should be fine. You shouldn't be damaging damaging your screen. Uh, no, that. no, indeed. And like you said, on the iPad Pro, it's it's, it's already better. It's, it's better. It's another texture, I think, yep. as yep. well. Um, um, I mean, and, and the advantage is, of course, it's matte, so you mm -hmm. have less res reflections on your display, uh, so you can sit in brighter sunlight and still read what's on your display. So yeah. I think um, people that I, I don't know for for graphic intensive tasks if that could be an issue but for all the other people i think having a matte display option is better especially for devices that you take with you traveling mm -hmm. um you will have a better time in, in bright lighting yeah indeed that's correct um but of course um we're gonna have those devices and demo as well um i think we're gonna order the imac with the nano dis uh, texture display and and the macbook as well um so we're gonna test it out and that's also possible for you customers um if you want to test a device um you can contact our um accounting team um and then we can fix a uh, demo period and then you can test it out in the environment you're gonna use the the, the the device and my, my colleague uh, will be benchmarking as well right so yeah. we now have put the slides from apple on display and we will do our own testing in a various range of apps so we can tell you what the actual performance increases are uh, with yeah. every spec yeah absolutely then then we see it in real life because of course we have to test it by ourselves also by by the, the software we have normally software it should be any problem uh, but then we see that as well we do it also for adobe um the new updates of adobe with we, we test them as well um and then we're gonna see the, the the performance improvements but i mean the first benchmarks that leaked online from the uh, m4 pro i didn't see any from the m4 max before the m4 pro the Mac Mini now rivals the uh, Studio mm -hmm. with the Max chip in it. So, th I mean, that that's interesting to see what Apple will do with the Mac Studio in the future. I, I guess they will update that somewhere down the line next year. But mm -hmm. uh, performance-wise, the, the Pro chip is already a beast of a machine. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, because I was thinking about buying a Mac Studio a few months ago, and I think I'm happy I didn't do that because now I'm... I'm in another line uh, of thinking which device will choose. It's a whole price difference, right? So the yeah. Mac Mini with M4 Pro chip starts at sixteen sixty nine. Yeah. Um, and you can go bonkers with the options, but I mean that baseline M4 Pro should be more than sufficient more than for enough. Your needs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because at, at this moment I have uh, privately MacBook Pro 14 inch, quite with with good specs with the M M, M2 Pro, um, and it's quite okay, but want to have that extra I take and then the Mac Mini can take in place because yep. maybe it's in Mac Mini Pro for example if you take the yep. the um, highest higher specs okay I hope that's clear uh, about the, the question about uh, the nano texture so we're gonna test it out of course um, and then we're gonna see um, how it's work but at don't think it would be any problem. Uh, we see that as well on um, the iPad Pro uh, with the nano texture was also superb uh, to use outdoor. Um, okay, I think we have everything set. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm gonna put my thank you slide up. But give <laughs> us some feedback on on this format. Do you want us to keep doing this with the new releases? Is this interesting for you? Yeah. 
for us it's fun to do but <laughs> i mean it has to be beneficial for our customers as well indeed do you like our story or not that's an important one for us um because yeah we have the id um with the apple insight session uh, to repeat that it was now our first edition um that we do that so it was an, an id we had last week um during the the new uh launches uh of the of the new max so we thought yeah why we don't do the webinar would to, to announce everything and, and to have our own opinion already about the devices before we see them um by hand um but yeah we want to repeat that um and if possible quarterly i think that that's that's nice to have and then we can doable. give everything an update everyone an update about the new stuff um so yeah if you like our formats um just put it in q a or in chat um and then we know that um or maybe you have an id um about uh, topics we can can bring in front uh, do you want maybe for example more mdm uh, more hardware uh more inside talks maybe um yeah for us it's, it's the same we like to we like to do these webinars uh, together and if any questions would arise on the on the announcements of last week uh, feel free to send us a message and we'll get back to you as soon as we can all righty absolutely um yeah and i think we if we have the devices that we benchmarked everything um that will come back with a, a second edition of, of this webinar series um i think that's gonna be um yeah the end of november beginning of december i think um it's gonna depend uh when we receive the devices of course we, we can get jasper in here and just yeah absolutely with us we take an extra mic and then it's okay <laughs> then uh, we can discuss everything as well okay so this webinar is gonna be online on our youtube channel uh, by this afternoon um so you can re-watch everything and slide back in time and and um can can take all, all the the feature that we discussed um back or otherwise you can send the link as well to colleagues uh, or some friends um and then we let uh, our community grow i think yeah, okay jody thank you very much for your thank time you. today Alrighty, and everyone uh, that was following this webinar live, thank you very much, and we see you soon. Yes, see you soon. Thank see you. See you soon. Bye bye. Thank you.